Good morning. Um, appreciate the opportunity to stand before you this morning. And if you will, turn me to John chapter 3. Gospel of John chapter 3. Um, have you ever heard about, I don't know that I've ever had one, a life verse, like a verse that you just memorize and, and, and keep before you all the time, kind of directs the things you do and the things you think? It's not a bad idea, is it? Um, to, to get a, a life verse. Um, it's something I've, uh, um, I didn't really know about until, until a few months ago that that isn't even a thing, but um, it, apparently it is. Well, I want to go with you to John chapter 3, and Jesus has finished his conversation with Nicodemus. He's with his disciples. They've been baptizing. It says in verse 23, And John also was baptizing in Anon near Salem, because there was much water there. Now, that's very important to remember. Um, why was he baptizing there? Because there was much water there. Uh, it takes much water to be baptized, at least enough to go under, right? Uh, through immersion. And they came and were baptized, for John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizes, and all men come to him. And John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. Now, I submit to you, chapter, verse 30 here is a good life verse. John had a good life verse. He says, he, speaking of Jesus Christ, he must increase, but I must decrease. That's a good verse, isn't it? He must increase, but I must decrease. Do you remember John Melvin was here several years ago before I even was a member of this church and he said he was going to bring a great theological point and he said there is a God and it is not you. <laughs> Y'all remember that? That was his theological point. Well I've tried to um, I've tried to teach every grace and I, I probably fail every grace and bow and, and something that I think about a lot and I have to remind myself over and over and over is that it is not about me. And it's not about you, right? Uh, we're here today because of someone else. We live in a society that is obsessed with self, right? <laughs> They're obsessed with uh, people will run over you to get to the top of the corporate ladder, the top of uh, life. They don't care how many people have to step on. Um, why do you think social media is so popular? Because you can check up on your cousins in Mississippi? No, because you can be the star of the show, right? <laughs> You can put what you want on social media. You can see how many people will like your post or retweet your post or whatever. That's why it's so popular, right? Um, but for Christians, life is not about you. You say, what's well, not about me? Basically everything, right? <laughs> Basically everything. Think about the Bible. The Bible is not about you, right? Jesus said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So like when you go read David and Goliath, the story of David and Goliath, uh, here's, a, here's a hint. You're not David. You're the Israelites that were scared and cowering in the corner, right? And Jesus is the David that takes care of the giant for you. Do you understand that? What about the church? Church is the pillar and ground of the truth. It's the church of the living God. And it's not about you. And when people get um, to thinking that, that church is all about me, uh, we get in trouble, right? What about relationships? When you start thinking relationships are all about me, um, your marriage will fail. Your, you know, if if it's all about me, you won't raise your children right. Or you can't have friendships. Do y'all ever? Um, this week, um, it's important to know that it's not about you, right? This week we were meeting some friends Friday night for dinner, and Carrie and I got there first, and we have an ongoing debate about TV in the bedroom. Do y'all watch TV in the bedroom? <laughs> um, well, Carrie likes to fall asleep with the TV on, and then she likes to leave it on for three or four hours. <laughs> until she wakes up and turns it off. And I always say, turn the TV off. Well, uh, this debate had been going on for two or three weeks. And so finally she said, okay. And she turned the TV off about 9 o'clock. After a few days, I realized that maybe the TV was helping me go to sleep. <laughs> so I said, Carrie, let's turn that TV back on. <laughs> but then I wanted the TV off. And so we're talking Friday night. She said, you need to make up your mind what you want on that. And I said, here it is, babe. 
basically, I want the TV on until I want it off. <laughs> and then I was thinking about this verse. <laughs> and I said, but you know what, Carrie? It's not about me. And my dear wife said, the sooner you learn that, the better off you're going to be. <laughs> I'm an only child, so I guess maybe that's why I think about it a lot. I know you're thinking, boy, you're well-rounded for an only child, but, <laughs> you know, for most of my life, it's been all about me. <laughs> um, but, you know, you, if you ever start, start living for others and living for Jesus, life is a lot better, isn't it? Uh, the times that I do that, it is a lot better. In Philippians uh, we've talked about, we, we went through Philippians about two years ago, and it's all about joy. The, the, the great verse in Philippians 4, 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. And we use the acronym JOY, was Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. Y'all remember that? Or maybe that's cheesy, I don't know. But Jesus first, others second, and yourself last, that really is how you experience joy. Paul said in Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 2, he says, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. He says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than himself. Through strife or vainglory, that's selfish ambition is what Paul's talking about. He says, don't let the church uh, be a place that you, you strive for your own selfish ambition, but put others in front of yourself. Um, Jesus taught that in, in Matthew chapter 22, starting in verse 34. It says, But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus is telling you, he didn't tell you not to love yourself, right? He knew you were going to love yourself. And how many of you give yourself a lot of grace? I give myself a lot of grace, a lot more than I give others, right? But Jesus is saying, give, give others the same amount of grace that you give you, right? And love God the way God needs to be loved. It's not about you. Here, here's, here's, a, here's something that you can... You say, well, how do I know it's not about me? What's it about? It's about God and about loving others, right? That's simple. Do we understand? We agree with that? Look at the Bible. In, in Adam, he's the first man ever. He names, he names all the animals. He walks with God, talks with God. Genesis chapter 5 and verse 5 says, In all the days of Adam, in all the days that Adam lived, were 930 years, and he died. And then the Bible moves on and it just keeps going. And we, we get to Noah. Noah obeys God, he keeps life on earth. Peter called him a preacher of righteousness in his epistle. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 9 and verse 29, but all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. And the Bible just moves on. <laughs> Abraham, he was a friend of God. He walked with God. He's an example to all believers. Father of many nations, Genesis chapter 25 and verse 8 says, Then Abraham gave up the ghost, and he died in a good old age, and an old man and full of years, and gathered to his people. And what does the Bible do? It moves on. <laughs> Jacob who become Israel, the father of the tribes of Israel. It says in verse in chapter 20, 35 of Genesis, Isaac gave up the ghost and died and was gathered unto his people, being old and full of days. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. And once he was buried, it moved on. And the truth is that you and I are going to die one day, and the world's just going to move on. How many of you can name your great-great-grandparents? I, I couldn't right now. Because it's not about us, Right? But then Jesus dies, and that's what the whole Bible and the whole story of life rests on, right? <laughs> what he accomplished in that death. Think about that. It's all about him, right? Amen. Do we agree this morning? It's all about him. We could go on. If, 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 if you want to look at somebody who, who understood this, look at the Apostle Paul. He understood that, right? If, if anybody uh, gets that it was not about him, it was the Apostle Paul. And he spent nights... Uh, in, the, in the sea, being shipwrecked, he was beaten, he was without sleep, he was starving. And he says in, in, in to Timothy, he says, I endure all things for the elect's sake. Remember that? He was living for God, he was living for God's people. And I would say the Apostle Paul didn't have a, a good life as far as he wasn't rich and he wasn't uh, 
powerful, and he, he wasn't what maybe the American dream wants. But, but listen to his last chapter. Well, let's go read 2 Timothy and just think, here's a man that's gone through all this and just the peace that you can tell in that, right? He says, all these people have forsaken me. Alexander the coppersmith has caused me much harm. And, and then he says, he basically says, I hope God doesn't even lay it to their charge. That's a man that wasn't living for himself, right? W wouldn't y'all like to have that kind of life? Amen. I, hope, I hope this made sense. Love you.